Welcome back to Unnati Unleash, the podcast where we delve into the stories of empowerment and growth. Today, among us, we have Miss Sandhya, ma'am. I welcome you, ma'am, to our podcast, and I request you to please introduce yourself to our viewers. Hi, my name is Sandhya Anantanarayanan. I am a chartered accountant. I am a part of the Unnati Finance team, and I have been associated with Unnati for almost ten years now. Thank you so much, ma'am, for introducing yourself to our viewers. And uh, ma'am, I have few questions. Uh, with your permission, I would like to begin. Sure, sure. So, ma'am, uh, could you please tell us about what it takes a chartered accountant uh, to work in a social sector? Mm, yeah, sure. Uh, the social sector uh, basically helps in you know shaping and uh, empowering the marginalized section of the uh, society, okay. and thereby they contribute into development of the nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, they usually struggle with maintaining their finances and their uh, compliances. Mm-hmm. So, chartered accountants with their financial knowledge, yeah. uh, they will be able to contribute a lot mm-hmm. uh, to this uh, nation building by helping the uh, social sector, the NGOs, uh, with their accounting requirements, their reporting requirements, their budgeting, mm-hmm. helping them with their compliances, uh, reporting you know, uh, for various funders and donors. There's so many areas mm-hmm. in which they can actually uh, help. Right? Um, to answer your question, uh, what it takes for a CA mm-hmm. uh, to be uh, in the social sector, uh, the most important thing is you know, the chartered accountant has to be uh, dynamic. Okay. They should first understand what the NGO is involved in, what is the social cause mm-hmm. that they are involved in. Yeah. And what are the projects mm-hmm. that they are undertaking? They need to understand in depth the working of the organization in detail. In detail. Okay? And then they need to understand how it translates to the uh, requirements of the finance team. Mm-hmm. Uh, there will be a lot of challenges which come along the way. Okay. So they should be, uh, they cannot look at things with a skewed or a limited perspective. Mm-hmm. They should be open, broad minded. Um, uh, they should be able to do out of the box yeah. uh, thinking. Mm-hmm. Right? They should be resilient mm-hmm. and they should be able to adapt to the various challenges, day-to-day challenges which arise. All the more with the laws becoming more stringent, yeah. having more uh, compliance. compliance. So, the most important thing, traditionally as uh, chartered accountants, when we start right from our articles you know, we are trained to uh, look at things with a, with an, or with, with a mind, mindset, audit mm-hmm. mindset. I am not saying this in a negative way. It's, um, uh, more to say, you know, we are trained to look at things, you know, what is not right or what is not compliant with the law or what is not, uh, you know, uh, what could, could, could be wrong no, or yeah. what could may not be correct. Mm-hmm. Um, here we need a complete change in mindset. Here we have to first look at what is being done right mm-hmm. and try to help the NGOs mm-hmm. with, the, uh, uh, with strengthening the rest of the areas. Okay, thanks for sharing that, ma'am. So, ma'am, uh, could you please tell us what measures do Unnati take uh, to maintain its uh, governance and transparency? Yeah. Um, uh, with respect to good governance, see, there are various policies in place mm-hmm. uh, for ensuring good governance. Okay. Right? Uh, we have the finance policy, mm-hmm. we have the travel policy, then we have risk mitigation policy, okay. then we have the HR policy, mm-hmm. we have a no conflict of interest policy, etc. We also have a zero tolerance posh policy, which whereby we ensure a safe working environment for uh, women. And um, uh, with respect to you know workflow and uh, functioning of the various departments, it, it is it is quite structured. Mm-hmm. We have been taking measures over the years uh, to see how we can improve our processes, mm-hmm. and so that you know uh, things are done in a better manner. How to constantly improve ourselves. Mm-hmm and uh, work more efficiently mm-hmm. right? and uh, similarly as I mentioned earlier you know laws are becoming more stringent yeah. year, whether the CSR law or mm-hmm. tax law where day by day the compliances are increasing yeah. so we are also using uh, technology to help us mm-hmm. uh, for uh, ensuring yeah. the good governance as well as uh, compliances mm-hmm. compliance management right? and uh, to give you an example and with respect to transparency to give you an example mm-hmm. um, the government has been over the years, you know, pushing for uh, digital practices in, li- in line with the digital, so in line with the digital India policy. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So one of the measures that uh, we have taken to ensure better transparency is in the area of uh, cash management. Earlier, they used to collect uh, fees 
uh, from students by way of cash several years back. Yeah. A few years back, we moved uh, to digital mm -hmm. platform. Yeah. So now the students can pay, and we have completely stopped cash, collection okay. of cash. Okay. So there's no question of uh, cash collection. Mm -hmm. The students can pay either through banking channels or UPI yeah. or what. That's mm -hmm. one. Similarly, when, uh, with respect to our expenditures mm -hmm. also, the cash payments are absolutely minimal. We can say that almost 100%, 99.99% of the payments mm -hmm. are made through banking Bank channels. Okay. Um, you know, we can very confidently say that cash transactions account for way less than 1% of the total transactions mm -hmm. in the entire organization. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the measures. Um, <clears throat> another thing that we, I can say about transparency is we are very open to sharing information. Yeah. And uh, whenever a new funder mm -hmm. comes to us and uh, for a due diligence, mm -hmm. they want to know what this organization is all about, what yeah. it is all about, mm -hmm. how it does its work, how is the how the same questions that yeah. you asked, what mm -hmm. measures it has taken mm -hmm. for you know the documentation. So when they visit us, when they come to us and they see how we are going about uh, doing our activities and how we are maintaining the documentation. Mm -hmm most of the funders eventually end up funding us based on the strength of our governance, Correct. our transparency, mm -hmm. as well as our documentation. Yeah. And um, I'm sure that uh, you all know that uh, Unati is the first to be listed yes, on the social yeah, yeah, stock yes, exchange, yeah. mm -hmm. which, which itself bears testimony to this yeah. fact, to sure. the measures adopted by the organization yeah, to ensure good governance, governance. and transparency. Yeah. Sure, ma'am. Uh, so ma'am, uh, like as you are engaged in an NGO like Unnati, so I think you'll be the better person to answer this question. So ma'am, uh, what's the like? What's the difference um, in any finance team functioning in a regular company or a Section Eight company or an NGO? Yeah. <clears throat> um, so the way the finance team functions in the social sector in an NGO is quite different. Okay. Um, from the way it functions in a regular corporate uh, environment or regular business environment. There, there are some similarities of course, mm -hmm. but uh, the prime, uh, there's a huge primary difference. Um, see what happens in a regular corporate environment or a business environment, the normal functioning you know, involves the finance is, uh, the function of the finance is more uh, attuned towards achieving uh, business goals, which are the normal goal, business goals being uh, you know, increase in revenue or profit maximization mm -hmm. is typically and the finance function is also involved uh, in relation to that. You can say, you know, they do the regular accounting and mm -hmm. reporting, they have to manage their accounts receivables, they have to manage their accounts payables, mm -hmm. right, and there is cash management, mm -hmm. managing the assets and liabilities. So, it's more for achieving those kind of business goals. Yes. Right? Um, in the social sector, uh, what happens is we need to um, unlearn a lot of things that we have learned earlier, earlier okay. and relearn yeah. a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. right? So the primary basis mm -hmm. of accounting or financial management in a social sector is fund accounting. Okay. So when I say fund accounting, mm -hmm. um, the finance team needs to you know, um, ensure that all the activities that they are doing, especially the expenditures, right, mm -hmm. they are in line with whatever projects are being undertaken, they are in line with budgets mm -hmm. that have been, you know, earlier made and uh, which, which should be within the budgets, budgets, right? And it should also be in line with um, whatever agreements mm -hmm. or MOUs have been, which have been entered with the funders or the okay. donors, mm -hmm. right? Budgeting is a very crucial and critical mm -hmm. element of financial management of okay. the um, social sector right I can uh, let me give you an example okay. by which yeah, you know sure. uh, you'll be able to understand this yeah. better <clears throat> so supposing if a regular a business organization buys a pen yeah. maybe this is a manufacturing organization it's into manufacturing say because you do this maybe electrical appliance yeah. or like fridge or whatever mm -hmm. right uh, so or maybe it is into software okay. or whatever mm -hmm. so if it buys a pen mm -hmm. it will account for it mm -hmm. as a stationary yeah. a normal stationary, stationary. purchase yeah, yeah. And they just close it. Mm -hmm. They don't have to think twice about mm -hmm. what it is. But here at Unity, what are we involved in? We are involved in vocational training of underprivileged people. Yeah. So if a pen is purchased in the organization, 
we have to first see what is the purpose of purchasing this pen. Yeah. Okay. Right. So it could be for it could be for uh, usage by the normal uh, the admin staff mm -hmm. or the HO staff. Then that goes as a purchase of stationery. Yeah. The purpose is they are just doing the regular working. Mm -hmm. Right. It could be for the student okay. who is being trained here at mm -hmm. the center. It yeah. could have been purchased mm -hmm. for the student. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, then this doesn't get accounted as stationery. Okay. It gets accounted as a training material because it is okay. part of the training okay. expenditure yeah. for that student. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and uh, you have to see which student, which location that student pertains yeah, to, yeah. and then accordingly you mm -hmm. account for it. Okay. A third usage of this pen, mm -hmm. right? Could be that you know, in our uh, Bangalore center yeah. here, we have a constant train the trainer program, right? A new change maker who is mm. uh, appointed, yeah. they undergo a training mm. program right? for a month and yeah. then they are then deputed to various so the locations. Yeah. Mm. Come from. This pen could have been provided to them. Mm. Okay. So then it is not part of the training materials for the student, okay. it is part of the training materials for the train the trainer program. Train. Okay. So then we look at, okay, mm. this is for this. Then we see for which location that trainer has been hired. Right, okay. So then that location, then we have to see who is the funder for that location. Mm. So then this expenditure has to get captured under that funder. That funder okay. So you can imagine this is not the question of just accounting for yeah. a single pen, pen yeah. which has been purchased. Mm -hmm. Maybe the value is hardly 5 rupees mm -hmm. or 10 rupees. But there are so many elements yeah. that are involved Involved's. in accounting for this pen. Mm. Okay. So that is the extent of detail, mm -hmm. the attention to detail, detail to every transaction, yeah. that is what is important. important and along with this we also have to ensure compliance mm -hmm. with various laws. For example, we have this FCRA, the Foreign Contribution yeah. Regulation Act. Mm -hmm. So the FCRA law says that the books have to be maintained in certain manner, the transactions uh, or the expenditures which are made from FCRA funds have mm -hmm. to be kept as a separate set of books. Okay. So now I need to Coming back to the pen example, mm -hmm. I need to find out whether I have paid for this pen mm -hmm. from my local domestic funds or from my foreign funds. Foreign funds yeah. So if it is from my foreign funds, mm -hmm. I have to account for it in the FCRA books. I cannot account for yeah. it in the yeah. local yeah. books. Yeah. So that is the element or the level of detail mm -hmm. which has to be captured for at every transaction that is accounted yeah. for. So this is how the mm -hmm. operations mm -hmm. in a social sector yeah. is different. different from a regular business yeah, totally different. Yeah. Uh, so ma'am, lastly, I would like to ask you how technology has leveraged at Unnati to help you and your team to work here. Sure. Okay. Over the years, we have, um, you know, made a conscious effort mm -hmm. to include technology in various activities, departments, functions of the organization. Mm -hmm. And we have moved uh, from traditional uh, legacy systems, local uh, to more relevant uh, cloud-based software which will help us based on today's mm. uh, technology, technology yeah. which helps us to gather more data, to mm. maintain the data more efficiently, yeah. to perform various functions more mm. efficiently. Right? For example, uh, we have the six class uh, software mm. which uh, holds the entire student related uh, information, information yeah. right? their badge, mm -hmm. the student's age, their demograph uh, uh, demographics, where they are male, mm -hmm. female, where they come from, what is their background, they come from, their address, right? Lot of all the entire uh, student data, right? where the, after the program has been completed, um, where they are placed, yeah. and while the program is being conducted, what is their progress, mm -hmm. all this is captured in the uh, student, six, software, six, yeah. student software, mm -hmm. right? then uh, for our um, the compliance management, mm -hmm. as I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, the laws are becoming more and more stringent. There's so mm -hmm. many compliances coming up every other day. Yeah. So we have a compliance management software, okay. which uh, you know keeps reminding us oh. that okay, the tax payments are due, due the FCRA yeah, okay. returns are due, yeah. right? The GST returns are mm -hmm. due. So that really helps us. Yeah. So we get, give us the no we, we get the notification mm -hmm. a few days in advance, and then we are ready, so ready yeah. to uh, prepare, yeah. prepare mm -hmm. so that we comply mm -hmm. on time yeah. within the due date for various uh, things. Then, uh, from our uh, finance uh, perspective, yeah. right? Um, we, are, we used to use a very popular accounting software, which is usually used across organizations mm -hmm. in the country. But with the growth in the organization, um, we realized that uh, we may not be able to sustain yeah. with that. Yeah. So, uh, during the last uh, financial year, mm -hmm. we moved 
uh, from the old software to a new ERP, okay. which is specifically for NGOs, NGOs okay. which means the needs of NGOs. And As I mentioned about the FCRA books, set, mm -hmm. yeah, set yeah, of books yeah. to maintain separately. Mm -hmm. So this uh, software helps us with that. It also helps us to upload various supporting documents. You know, it um, we don't have to print vouchers and okay. you know manage paperwork. Oh, nice. Earlier yeah, we used to yeah. we used to maintain a lot of paperwork. Mm -hmm. Then we have brought in uh, various things, workflows through the system. Mm -hmm. So earlier, for example, if I give you travel reimbursement, mm -hmm. there used to be a physical and manual form yeah. which had to be filled. Mm -hmm. It had to go across uh, departments for mm -hmm. various approvals. approvals then yeah. it used to come to finance for mm -hmm. us to make the payment. Now this workflow has been brought into the system. system. So whoever requires that mm -hmm. amount has, you know, as first as to raise the request in, mm -hmm. in the system, it automatically goes to the concerned operations mm -hmm. team yeah. and there it comes to finance through the system. This is a complete clean track record of the yeah. entire flow of the mm -hmm. of the transaction yeah. right so that is how this software is helped us it helps us with the various uh, reporting mm -hmm. uh, requirements yeah. for different donors mm -hmm. we are able to configure that in the system mm -hmm. so it makes easy a donor easy. reporting yeah, easier yeah. we mm -hmm. can even give access uh, to various auditors we have our own statutory auditors mm -hmm. even the funders send their own auditors for uh, audit Audits, so yeah. earlier we had to extract the data mm -hmm. send it to them so a lot of man hours being yeah, lost yeah. in uh, mm -hmm. this process mm -hmm. Right? Because audit keeps happening almost mm -hmm. every other day, every yeah, other week. Yeah. We have so many funders. Mm -hmm. Somebody or the other will send their auditors. Yeah. So now we are able to give access mm -hmm. to the system directly. Yeah. And the auditors can access the yes. data from yeah. wherever they are. Mm -hmm. And they can do so. It's much faster. Yeah. And um, it makes life easy, easy, easy for us too. Yeah. 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 Right? So that is another uh, thing. Then. Um, uh, the example that I gave earlier mm -hmm. of cash, see, we have centers, we have 35 centers across mm -hmm. uh, India. India yeah. Every center has its uh, requirement for uh, petty cash mm -hmm. to uh, meet their local expenditure, local like the, lo the yeah. electricity bill of the center, mm -hmm. the telephone bill of the center, mm -hmm. maybe some tea expenses, mm -hmm. training materials were purchased for the students there. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So we had an expense management system called Happy Again, uh, which is an online. We, uh, you know, provided them uh, with a debit card. Okay. It's a preloaded debit card that we can give. So from our center, central location, we can actually either load the card or withdraw based on the requirements, and okay. they can report through the system. system. Okay. So it is online, mm -hmm. real time. Yeah, yeah, true. Right, and we have better control mm -hmm. over uh, the payments, and as far as possible, it is digitized. Digitized, yeah. The Again, the cash transactions are very, very, it's, it's very minimal very because the, it's a debit card that's mm -hmm. given to them. Yeah. So they can actually swipe the card mm -hmm. at the shops. Yeah. They can make all their payments. That's yeah. much easier. It's yeah. much easier. Yeah. And those transactions automatically get reflected into the yeah. system. So, so the record is there also. Absolutely. So, yeah. absolutely. Entire flow of the record. Mm -hmm. And again, it comes through the uh, operational work, the approval metrics, mm -hmm. the workflows follow. So when they submit, it goes to their concerned uh, manager mm -hmm. for their approval and comes to finance for so all this is set up within the yeah. uh, system. system. So we have a couple of other uh, softwares too, which is your, uh, you know, we have an asset management mm -hmm. software, 35 centers, we've got yeah. assets all across okay. the centers. Mm -hmm. So to manage the physical verification of the assets, see where they are. So we have an asset management system. Mm -hmm. Then uh, now we are in the process of, uh, we have a project called uh, mm -hmm. Unext, and uh, we are in the process of uh, building a placement portal. Okay for those uh, Unix mm -hmm. students that's under process, the software under process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're also um, uh, thinking of um, uh, building an indigenous uh, software, okay. uh, which will talk to all these mm -hmm. uh, systems mm -hmm. and help us with um, you know, uh, various analytics which are required by the top management mm -hmm. in order to make strategic decisions. Mm -hmm. So that's in the pipeline. Yeah. Thank you so much, ma'am, sharing all your expertise with us today. And thank you so much for joining with us today. Uh, most welcome. It was my pleasure, too. Thank you so much for having thank me on this podcast. Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you.